This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. It's kind of interesting how I'm, I'm really seeing that this game just has like very distinct chapters without even saying like new chapter, but like we get a bunch of different like mini storylines almost, which is actually kind of interesting. I kind of like this like whole we we're at a school and we're basically getting a bunch of different short skits to develop the characters. That's actually kind of cool. I like that. It's not what I was expecting from this game. Imprinting. Newborn chicks identify the first thing they see as their parent. The term refers to this sort of rapidly formed, durable conviction. Today, almost anyone you ask will have heard something about the phenomenon, but... Fewer know that imprinting isn't limited to the animal kingdom, but also occurs among humans, even average female students. This particular discovery is the product of my own recent experience. You know what? If I had to pick one of the girls to follow us around and spend a lot of time with us, it would be Sachi. She's so sweet. Yeah. When I leave my room, I find Sachi heading toward the second floor with a deck brush and a bucket. Is this a set, a, a set cleaning time for the dorm? Then why are you carrying a bucket and a deck brush? Oh, I thought someone spilled their lasagna in the cafeteria. Probably Michiru. If I remember correctly, you told me a contractor comes in to clean that bathroom. Good memory, I forgot about that. So you're cleaning it on your own initiative? Oh, I bet someone spilled their lasagna in the bath. Don't eat while taking a bath, it's a bad idea. Hmm. I guess that's sort of class rep-esque, but more importantly, you intending to clean in that outfit? I still want to know who it was said that. Because I was assuming it was another guy at the school who was like, Yeah, I want, I want Sachi to wear a maid outfit, that'd be so hot. <laughs> but apparently they're all girls, so I don't really know. When you can, huh? Considering the vagueness of those words, I'm a little concerned about how she's interpreting them. So, when you go out, what do you usually wear? Oh, Sachi. How about when you're studying in your room? When you're in the bath? Okay, well, at least that's... When you're sleeping? You need some pajamas. I get the picture. Basically, she's in a maid uniform pretty much every moment she's not in school. No wonder the principal said she wears them more often than not. But wearing a service uniform, even when you're sleeping, is a little... Wait, don't tell me you don't have any other clothes. So what? You just really enjoy wearing that uniform? I mean, I like the modesty of that outfit. I just feel like it would be uncomfortable to wear all the time. Hmm. Uh, but if she, if she wants to wear it, then there's nothing wrong with that. I just feel like you should at least have a set of pajamas. So basically, she likes the clothes themselves. In that case, Sachi, let me give you my opinion on your style. Hi. Uh-oh. Fundamentally, men are simple creatures. Rather than clothes with a narrow appeal like a maid uniform, we prefer a simple, straightforward, erotic look. Um... No. I don't want everybody dressing erotically. <laughs> no! That's a bit extreme. Also, it takes time and effort to change the appearance of your body itself. I don't like where this is going. Right. For example, I'd imagine you're wearing modest underwear appropriate for a student. But what do you think would happen if you, the class rep, finished everyone, flashed everyone a pe- uh, I'm not even going to finish that. This is so bad. That momentary glimpse of your unpredictability would dramatically shift the way people perceive you. This is not going to end well. In conclusion, underwear isn't some- <laughs> What?! What?! Uh, Yuji, what the heck are you even talking about? Oh, no. 
But if you go past the casual level with this, it'll backfire on you. Do it in moderate. Yuji, you are such a creep. Well, that should be common sense, but... Alright, I think I've gotten my point across. No, you, no, you did not. This is not going to end well. This is not going to end well. With those words, Sachi headed to the second floor. At that time, I had forgotten something very important. I forgot something very important. That, that Yuji is a huge creep towards Sachi. And really, like, only Sachi. Oh, no. At this school, there are students for whom common sense doesn't always apply. <sighs> hey, Michiru. Yeah. When I enter the classroom, I exchange greetings with Michiru, who was, as usual, the first to arrive. Hey, girl. Next up, Sakaki arrives. Take a turn as usual. The energetic Cicada sisters follow. Yep, I knew it. And finally, Sachi in her underwear. Her underwear? Don't even act surprised, dude. You did this. The four others freeze up at the unexpected spectacle. Coming to her senses, Amine grabs a maid uniform from Sachi's locker and throws it over her. For this stream, I'll allow it. <sighs> Why? Why is this in the game? This adds nothing. Once Sachi's on the spot, changing is complete. Amine sighs in relief. That, that warranted some headbanes. Never, ever trust the dating sim protagonist. <laughs> Sachi's reply is a word-for-word -word repetition of my advice from yesterday. Although that's admirable in a way, it seems that warning I added at the end went in one ear and out the other. You gave her crap advice! Yeah, yeah, that's that's warranted. And these withering glances of scorn aren't exactly comfortable either. Well, of course they immediately knew it was us. Nobody else would ask that. Sorry, but my proclivities are pretty normal. I'm not going to get off no matter how much you glare at me. Could have sworn. I don't think he under misunderstood any of it. I'm pretty sure this is exactly what he wanted. I don't know. Somebody got something out of telling her to dress up like a maid. So I don't know. Yes, he is. Yes, we are. With Amine's words, the other two turn their glares on me as well. I can't believe I'm 100% on Yumiko's side here. Yeah, he literally told her to dress in her underwear and show it to people. I did tell Sachi that underwear is more popular among the male population compared to a male uni maid uniform. I didn't mean to demand that she come to school wearing nothing else. Um, you kind of did. So this works on the same theory as schoolyard bullying? Amane, <laughs> 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 you know exactly what that means. Well, takes one and all one. 
Yes, Yumiko, please be the voice of reason, which is absolutely astounding. Please. Sachi's standing right there. So much that she'd hear, wear a maid uniform when you can, and then wear nothing else from the next day on? Oh, I bet it was Michiru who told her to do that as like a joke. She told me herself the day I transferred in. <laughs> I like the little, of the little curtsy. Sachi confirms my words silently. Well, fa thank goodness she got dressed before the teacher came, or else there would have been hell to pay. Why can't you just say, hey, Sachi, I was, I was joking about the maid uniform. You don't have to wear it anymore. True, it's pretty lame the way she keeps calling you Michiru-sama. I thought she was indirectly asking for the follow-up, but it seems she actually thought she was being vague. That makes it a little difficult. She sounds unusually athletic for a class rep. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I'll keep that in mind. Um, Sachi's the most modestly dressed one here. Well, now she is. She went from being by far the least to by far the most. It, it's one or the other. That's what you're thinking about, Yumiko? Apparently finished with their warnings and advice, everyone except Sachi returns to their respective seats. You? I was about to say she did nothing wrong, but you, you should have known better than to just dress in your underwear. You owe him zero apologies. We should apologize to you. No, nothing to apologize for. Yes, true. I don't think I worded my advice that well, and I'm impressed by your willingness to put your body on the line. What were you trying to say to her, Yuji? You literally told her to start dressing in her underwear, then you're like, I can't believe she started dressing in her underwear. This is unprecedented. This isn't my fault. It's hers for misconstruing. Like, shut up, dude. So this time, I think I'll teach you about how to casually emphasize your underwear. That's not something you can do casually. No, stop listening to him, Sachi. Okay, I'm beginning to think we shouldn't do the Sachi route because she deserves better. They say that for a parent bird, raising one chick to adulthood is the work of a lifetime, but for a transfer student, making friends of a classmate of the opposite sex is pretty rough in its own way. I think that's rough just even if you're not a transfer student. <laughs> Why are we getting the sneaky stealth music? On Dark Nights, it's not uncommon to mistake foliage swaying in the wind for the movements of a sinister human form. If you're alert, you'll understand rationally that it's just an illusion, but your senses feed off of that instinctive twinge of terror, transforming the rustling of leaves into the whispering of a demon. To the shrub or tree in question, this quirk of the human mind must be irritating. They mind their own business, spend their days earnestly assimilating carbon dioxide into its ligineous tissue, then this is the thanks they get. But the plants don't get the worst of it. There's nothing quite as obnoxious as the way people push misconceptions onto their animals. All too often pets are treated more like receptacles for the selfish delusions of human beings than companions. 
What if every pet in the world suddenly gained the ability to speak? I'm sure their owners are dying to hear their thoughts, but sometimes ignorance is bliss. It's difficult enough to come to a real understanding between fellow humans. How much harder would that be when one party is an animal? But even in the fantasy that our pets love us back, much must be more pleasant than facing that reality. What's about to happen? An erotic voice out of place in the peaceful sunshine. In the past, Japan relied heavily on row housing apartments. With thin walls and nosy neighbors, having sex in your own home could be surprisingly awkward. Why are you just talking about this? But as a result, inns aimed especially at couples sprung up, eventually developing into the famous love hotels, and modern housing circumstances usually allow for much greater privacy at home. In conclusion, having sex outdoors in this day and age is less likely an attempt at consideration toward your neighbors, and more likely an attempt at getting an additional thrill. Oh, come on. We've got a pervert. I bet this is just like a dog. Normally, I'm not in the habit of criticizing other people's fetishes, but screwing out fresco carries far higher risks than an amateur might expect. It's a highly unsanitary business. I mean, casual sex in general. I don't have the slightest idea who might be fornicating here, but I really should tell them off for their own good. Hey, idiots! Did you at least put down a blanket? <laughs> I've been expecting a half-naked couple tangled together, so I'm surprised to find Matsushima Michiru all by herself and very much clothed. I see. So you weren't a mere tsundere after all. You were, in fact, a sexually frustrated, perverted tsundere. No, I'm pretty sure she just found, like, a dog. I'm actually relieved in a way. You may be twisted, but at least you found a path to follow. Keep at it. Um, no. Oh, Michiru. No, your head seems to be on relatively straight today. Hmm. Listen, I'm telling you that I have respect for your de deviant spirit. You're a first-class pervert. You you have a lot of gall calling her the pervert when you just told Sachi to start dressing in her underwear more. <laughs> what else would you call someone who gets off outdoors without a thought for their surroundings? I don't think that's what she was doing. Hmm? <laughs> what did you just say? <laughs> that was the weirdest way I've heard someone say baka yet. <laughs> Black! <laughs> it appears I may have misinterpreted the situation, as you almost always do. Of course, there's a good possibility she's deceiving me out of sheer embarrassment, but I'm a kind enough human being to sympathetically pretend otherwise. There's nobody else there! You would have seen if she was actually doing that. I see. Sorry. Well, either way, I'll pretend to not have seen this. Alright, let's say it was a rehearsal for a play. A play in which you're attacked by a hoodlum. Your mouth keeps saying no, but your body says yes. Sound about right? Okay, so your body keeps saying yes, but your mouth says no? Also, break out your your <laughs> your fox taser. What? Isn't a Sudari supposed to give in right away? <laughs> Razor Teeth Michiru is the best Michiru. Well, I'd heard that a Sudari is a woman who says no when she means yes. So, like, does this add anything to the story of the game, or is this just there for? No reason. Amen. I see. The Sundari is more complex than I thought. Oh boy. Piece of cake, eh? Boom. Boom. <laughs> By the way, what's that big bushy thing you've got hidden there? Get, got rid of it? Look to your left. This time Michiru seems to have misunderstood something, so I point to her side. There's some sort of black lump in her hair that's partially visible. Eh? 
Oh, it's a kitty! Aww. <laughs> okay, yeah, so she was just playing with a little cat. Oh, that's actually really cute. You don't know what to do? Uh, pet it. <laughs> the lump of fur stretches grandly, revealing its identity. It was, in fact, a small black cat. The black cat coils around Michiru's legs, purring loudly. Unlike your average rotund house cat, it's a bit scrawny, and its hair is dirty and shaggy. Oh, it's probably a stray. Did he really follow you? It looks more like you carried him here. What's wrong with that? Cats don't follow people around unless they're very used to human company. I can't imagine an animal that's careless enough to casually follow some random blonde around would survive long in the wild. Well, that's true. You bribe it with food? Hmm. In that case, maybe it followed you instinctively. Immaturity might be a factor. <laughs> wow. Sakaki. Oh my <sighs> Put that thing back where it came from, or so help me. No. Why do I have to play house with you? Do it yourself. I try to be nice to everyone, not just girls. Anybody? Like who? <laughs> I like the vampire pose, too. No. <laughs> he does what he wants. You can handle a single cat on your own. There's nothing for me to help with. If you were in serious trouble, I'd lend a hand, but you shouldn't rely on others for every little thing. I mean, he does have a point. <laughs> Unbelievable! <laughs> Baboon. <laughs> Alright then, you put that thing back where you found it. Bye. You're really hopeless. Very well, in recognition of your empty head, loose morals and general incompetence, I'll give you a hint. Wow. Don't say thank you when he just bla brazenly insulted you like that. Are you aware that cats hate certain scents, citrus in particular? If you have something like that, it'll drive them off in no time. That's one of those off-brand suave models. That's it! In other words, your twin tails are soaked with cat repellent. If you dangle them in front of that vile black feline, there will be no doubt he'll flee. Oh, he's gonna, he, he's gonna start playing with them. Alright, this mission is designated the Battle of the Bulge Cat Edition. Engage the enemy at once. As of this moment, I'm designating that plastic ornament on the right side of your head, Alpha, and the plastic ornament on the left, Bravo. First, get Alpha in front of the cat. Shut up and move! Alpha forward! Attack! <laughs> oh no. Yes! Right! Face! Now quickly rotate! Support unit Bravo to the front! Alpha, you take the rear guard! Wow. This is gonna go great. <laughs> Good. The target's losing his will to fight. Finish him off with Charlie! He's the kid of the Chocolate Factory. That tuft sticking up above your head, obviously. Begin vibrating it at once. You mean her cowlick? <laughs> With feeling! <laughs> okay, the cat sounds in this are absolutely awful. <laughs> cat hat! You've heard of the cat in the hat. This is the cat who is a hat. It's way better. <laughs> he is indeed. Hat cat is best cat! Does this mean if we do her route, we get to see more of the cat? That would be great. Analysis complete! Abnormal perspiration, animal on head, eyes like a dead fish. 
The above three points conclude my observations. <laughs> looks like a comfy place to perch if you're a cat, actually. Also, the cat looks like Gigi from Kiki's Delivery Service. Because your head looked comfortable? I see this as an absolute win. Hmm, true, the operation has failed. Retreat! Ah, you're hard to please. Fine, I'll have to bring out my trump card. Hold out your hold your current position. I'll go get a bucket of water. <laughs> I'm getting a bucket and water. <laughs> We're just gonna dump a bucket of water on the cat and her head. Cruel vein? Did you think I was going to dump water on the cat? Sit on the bucket, drink the water, and take a break. <laughs> Did you just make light of water breaks? You maggot! Are you underestimating the horrors of dehydration? By the time your body is asking you for water, it's already too late! Regular, moderate fluid intake is absolutely crucial! He was 100% in the army. Oh, so sorry. Couldn't help myself. Well, then I'll be getting that bucket, go, so go stand by. <laughs> Why? I've heard cat ladies are very popular, especially with the internet. Also, you can literally just pick him up off your head and put him on the ground. These are such bad cat sound effects. They don't even... It doesn't even sound like someone's genuinely trying to sound like it. It literally sounds like someone's just saying, Meow. The shoe fits. No, seriously. It seems to have taken you to you quite a bit. If you want to drive it off, maybe sprinkling water on it really is the best option. You do want to drive off the cat as soon as possible, right? Wow, Nick. That's harsh. <laughs> I am I'm a cat guy. Cats are better than dogs. Or at least I like cats more than dogs. It's just a stray cat, so I think I can. I'll get the water. Kitty meow. <laughs> hmm? Kitty, meow. Right. Splashing water from a bucket it is, then. Is that his name? Is that the name you gave the cat? I'm asking whether you gave this animal that ridiculous name! Answer me! Bumo. <laughs> You're the one saying those! Oh ho! You caught on! I noticed this habit you have of repeating short phrases, so I was experimenting to see how far you'd go with it. <laughs> cat on the head, cat on the head, we've all got a cat on our head. Pishu. Hmm, intriguing. By the way, that kitty meow of yours has been licking Charlie vigorously for a while now. No cats sound like that. I'm amazed the cat is not running away after that screeching. Shall I drive it off? I think Michiru is a robot, and the reason she doesn't want us to pour water on her is because if we do, she'll short circuit and malfunction. Understood. Alright, here we go. As I take my first step forward, the cat leaps off of Michiru's head and runs off somewhere. It's a bit anticlimactic, but I fulfilled Michiru's request. 
and yet Michiru is glaring at me in apparent displeasure. You'd almost think she didn't really want me to scare the cat off. Good for you, he ran off. You don't look particularly happy. Well, that's fine. As Michiru speaks, she's gazing fixedly in the direction where the cat disappeared, her expression wistful. That's a shame. Oh, brother. That aside, I'd consider thinking a little harder next time. The name. Kitty Meow is a bit... <laughs> Even as Michiru spits out those strained words, she's walking off in the direction the cat disappeared. She's clearly gotten attached to it. Why hesitate to admit she's fond of the thing? Why not just be honest about it? Maybe there's something else going on here. Then again, expecting a deeper reason from a girl who named a cat Kitty Meow might be a little too optimistic. And as, mysteri as mysteries go, that trauma bar as she left also qualifies. Although it seemed like nothing more than a bizarre shriek, perhaps it's a special cipher that will reveal a coherent message when parsed of a certain algorithm. Eh, I don't think so. I'm almost myself in self-derision. <laughs>